everyone, I'm Natalia Bilbao, and here's what's happening in LA this week. The San Fernando Valley came out to celebrate LGBTQ plus rights in its seventh annual Pride event. Council President Nuri Martinez was there to share how important it is to continue adding visibility through a kid-friendly pride that welcomed everyone to come together. Check it out. So are we all happy to be in person together again? Yeah. I can't hear you. Our seventh annual Valley Pride Day. We've been doing this now for seven years, and it's the first in person event that we get to have here in the district in three years since COVID. So I'm just really excited that people are out today celebrating LGBTQ rights here in the San Fernando Valley with their families to celebrate the diversity and inclusiveness that makes the San Fernando Valley so special. Having grown up here my entire life, we've had to go celebrate these types of events on the other side of the hill. We drive to other parts of Los Angeles to say, celebrate Pride. And I, seven years ago, wanted to make sure that we had an event here that is uh, very much about the San Fernando Valley. Things like this are really important for the youth, especially who are struggling, you know, coming out of COVID, being away from their friends, you know, their body changes and things like that. Uh, having people to, you know, to be here of all ages to say, like, I've been through this struggle too, it's been a part of my life too, and you can soldier on, is like really important. So that's why I'm here. It is kid friendly. A lot of prides are really um, very marginalized around more of an adult atmosphere with 21 plus, um, you know, people and vendors. This one opens up just to expose the community to what pride is and who, what pride represents. There's a lot of events here in Los Angeles, but it's not usually easily accessible, so, you know, it's great to have an event that's close to home for once. I'm excited for the food to see what we're going to have available, and it looks like we're going to have different vendors and stuff here too, so I'd be happy to purchase from everyone here within the community as well. And I hear there's going to be a karaoke. Are you going to get up there? Oh no, I'm not going to do karaoke. That's not going to be the thing that I do. <laughs> you see the involvement of the community being here. Even the children are here, and their parents that bring them here to be also with our community. We need all this to show everybody that it, we are one, we're included as part of this celebration for the whole community, for the whole Los Angeles area, and for California. As we've seen, young adults play a big part in adding visibility to social justice causes. Later in the show, we'll take a look at how the city is giving them tools for their careers. Dr. Martin Luther King's civil rights legacy is a national treasure. Here in LA, a city of rich diversity, Council District 10 held its annual Kingdom Day Parade, an opportunity for people to honor the teachings of a remarkable man who gave his life to achieve equality for all humanity. Let's take a look. I'm here to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. I grew up in the Deep South, and uh, I'm 74, and I realized the sacrifice that so many made along with Dr. King. And so I think the least I could do is come out here and celebrate his life and his legacy. It's important to come to this parade because Dr. King uh, gave his whole life, his 39 years, to free us from uh, slavery, to free us from the bondage of segregation, to uh, make equal uh, opportunities for all in education, in jobs, in housing, in healthcare. So uh, these are all things that are vital today, as vital as they were when Dr. King was alive. At the age of 70, I lived through a lot of what he talks about. So it's very, very important to me that we have something of our own. And a lot of respect for Mr. King, and that's why I'm here and I bring my children and my great-grandchildren here.
first of all, I want to look at this momentous occasion. We're talking about Juneteenth. A national holiday. First time this year we get to celebrate here in Los Angeles County, which has a rich history in racial discrimination, but today we're showing that we're unifying. I just hope that other cities and other nations across, across the nation recognize this and take the same step. As you can see, we had a rich, diverse representation in this parade today, right? When would you see black people dancing amongst LAPD, right? The, the sheriffs, and it's this big community, and this is very important that our youth get to see this, to, to show the hope for tomorrow, right? And tomorrow has come. Happy Juneteenth! Thirty acres is a big stretch of land. That is how much space will be used for the Sepulveda Basin Sports Complex in Encino. This site, which the mayor describes as potentially the best recreational and sports facility in Los Angeles, could host up to six events during the 2028 Olympics. Check it out. Today we're here to celebrate the $3 million I was able to get to be the anchor for what will be a $22 million project on these 30 acres, taking land that isn't used for anything and turning it into recreation and particularly sports fields. Estamos aquí para celebrar una inversión en nuestras comunidades, nuestras familias y nuestro futuro. Una instalación que se construirá aquí en la cuenca Sepúlveda que será un lugar para que las familias pasen tiempo juntas y los jóvenes jueguen. We're overjoyed. Both Encino and Lake Balboa share the Sepulveda Basin, and we're just trying to make it better for all of our stakeholders. Lake Balboa has 13 schools within our boundaries, and the kids need to get out and go somewhere where it's green and where they can have fun and learn new skills. With this type of federal dollars and investment, um, we are going to begin planning and dreaming of the things we love to do in recreation and parks and imagine ways that we can serve the public, allow for those community meetings, allow for places for kids to come, create more cooling centers. I think we need a few more of those. We're planning, we're ready, and this money is going to be well spent and well used. And I also just want to also thank the mayor for dreaming about the Olympics because there's going to be even more investment in this area. We don't know how many events, but at least three is maybe as five or six different events right here in this basin. We're going to make this the best recreational and sports facility, not just in the valley, but we think maybe in Los Angeles, period. It's important for kids and teens to be outside and have green spaces where they can learn new skills. Stick around to see a new center that will help teens sharpen their tech skills. Council District 9 partnered up with the city's Economic and Workforce Development Department and community organization CRCD to open a business source center in Southeast LA. The hub will help small businesses keep running and entrepreneurs get started. Channel 35 was at the ribbon cutting ceremony to get a first hand look. The Business Source Center is here to assist businesses in City Council District 9. Uh, we are, actually have a staff of uh, uh, three currently. We'll be, we'll be hiring additional staff. Uh, we'll be uh, also holding a number of different programs and events and training sessions. Those training sessions include everything from uh, small business finance to uh, capital access, procurement, uh, marketing, social media, and the like. So we have a number of programs on tap to uh, go live with shortly. So the center will be helping, I, I would say, two subsets of businesses. Your established businesses, who are already, you know, your mom and pop kind of, you know, uh, you know, businesses that are operating here in the business with a variety of different types of consultants that really will be working out of the center. And also for your entrepreneurs who are maybe trying to, you know, get their feet wet in terms of like, well, how do you start a business? How do I get the funding? How do I get my business plan going? That's what this is going to be helping. How this helps the greater community is that our businesses here in South LA, they're the cultural fabric of what it is to live here. If we can help our primary local uh, economic drivers in our small businesses, then our neighborhoods will be that much more better for it with not only uh, economic uh, opportunity for our businesses, but then also that same opportunity for our residents in the form of jobs. Someone would want to contact us uh, primarily because they might have a uh, neighborhood serving business, they are operating here, or they see a need. 
there's there, there, there might be a niche that they, they feel that they can uh, fulfill. Some businesses may just need help with a permit. Some businesses may need a help with uh, identifying uh, consultants that might be able to help them with, with an industry uh, need, whether that might be a restaurant, whether that might be a manufacturer. We're here to help and we have uh, business coaches that will actually help uh, in, a, in a variety of ways. Talent is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. Now, with the grand opening of the South LA Best Buy Team Tech Center, our youngsters can access this state-of-the-art technology center and build up their techie muscles. Who knows if the next big tech revolution will come out of here? The possibilities are endless. Check it out. Today was the grand opening to the public of the South LA Best Buy Team Tech Center a space where kids from South LA will be able to explore the future career opportunities and just experience what the tech industry has to offer and just express their creativity here at the tech space. There's a social entrepreneur, Lila Janae, who has this amazing quote that I always like to talk about, which is, talent is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. And that's exactly why we're here today, right? Because we know the talent in this community is so amazing. This was a thought of ours five years ago to bring technology to South LA. Initially started off thinking that we could do a computer lab, and then lo and behold, Annenberg and Best Buy show up. And now we've taken that whole thought of a computer lab to see what you see here today, a state-of-the-art technology center that anywhere in this country you could be proud of, but the kids in South LA who have access to these tools. We all understand that places like this power the next great idea in tech. Can you imagine the next TikTok coming out of this building? Or even better yet, an engineering method that makes technology more accessible. Well, thanks to Cine and Annenberg, and it has been now since we launched, what, four years? Pledge LA to say, we got all the ingredients, let's just make the commitment to say, if I'm already lucky enough to be in tech, I will bridge that to the youth that are here. I want you to imagine the doors of this team tech center wide open, embracing and welcoming all the youth of South LA. Now, if your imagination is much like my own, those possibilities are extremely endless. wants your help identifying cultural treasures in South LA. The Olivia Mitchell Youth Council holds its first meeting and San Pedro celebrates its annual LGBTQ plus Pride Festival. These stories up next on City Beats. The City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs and LA Commons released the Cultural Treasures of South LA Public Mapping Survey. The survey is part of an asset mapping process to identify South LA's cultural treasures as recognized by those who live and work there. The initiative will result in a database, interactive map, and video story bank of community-identified cultural treasures within South LA. To participate, fill out the online survey at southlaculture.org. The Olivia Mitchell LA City Youth Council held the first meeting of the new civic organization for Young Angelinos. Comprised of 30 youth from across the city, participants serve a one-year term during which they learn about local government. This is the first youth council meeting and this is the first time the 30 youth council members will be getting together. This is an opportunity for all of us to come and kind of share what we want to achieve and what interests we have that specifically relate to our districts. Youth Council members will develop special community projects and events and also make budget recommendations to elected leaders. The next generation of leaders is going to be this generation one way or another. So the best thing you can do is try to engage them in their city early, teach them how it works so that they learn to be advocates and possibly future council members that really kind of know how the city works and how to make things happen for the better. To learn more about the activities of the LA City Youth Council, visit youthcouncil.lacity.org.
The office of Councilmember Joe Buscaino celebrated pride by raising a rainbow flag over the LA Maritime Museum during its fourth annual San Pedro Pride Festival. The festival, coordinated in part by Bridge Cities Alliance, celebrated the visibility of the LGBTQ community within San Pedro. Food trucks, a children's craft area, a drag show, and a street parade were part of the festivities. Entertainment was provided by Mariachi Arcoiris de Los Angeles, an LGBTQ mariachi group. For more information on events in Council District 15, visit cd15.lacity.org. How do small restaurant owners get permission to serve alcohol at their business? The folks at City Planning have made it easier to help you find out if your restaurant is eligible and what steps to take to get approval thanks to the Restaurant Beverage Program. Let's take a look. The Restaurant Beverage Program is a new streamlined approval process for restaurants in the city to be able to get permission to serve alcohol at their businesses. It was created specifically with small businesses in mind to really help them get a foothold in the city and get started. And we're really hoping that this program is gonna support economic development, economic recovery as we're coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Businesses can take advantage of this program if they are in one of the selected geographies that the city council has identified as being eligible for the program. And you can find out whether your particular property or neighborhood is eligible by going to our website, Zemas, that's Z-I-M-A-S dot L-A city dot O-R-G. You can enter an address and find out whether or not a property is eligible for the program. So to apply for this program, businesses can use our online application portal. You can access that through the planning department's website, which is planning dot L-A city dot O-R-G. Click there and search for the restaurant beverage program. You can submit all of your application materials through that website, including paying the application fee. It takes about up to one month to process the application, and then you'll get, receive confirmation that you can begin uh, the alcohol service at your establishment. The goals for this program are to support small businesses getting started here in the city of Los Angeles. We're really trying to look for ways like this restaurant beverage program to make our processes more streamlined, less costly for the businesses and be able to get them operating much sooner. For the city, we're really excited to launch this program. We have a lot of hopes that it's going to support small businesses uh, and, and support communities. We know that restaurants are really the lifeblood of many of the city's neighborhoods and uh, this is going to allow for more of those restaurants to uh, be able to begin their alcohol service more quickly and serve the community. Physical and mental care are fundamental for our well-being, but so is earth care. The LA Department of Rec and Parks and Safe Soil and Environmental Initiative gathered at Elysian Park to do a five-kilometer walkathon. The event was to alert people about the need to prevent soil from becoming extinct. Check it out. Today, over 400 people are getting together for a walkathon uh, in support of the Safe Soil Movement. Safe Soil Movement is an environmental initiative. We all are concerned about our own self-care, our mental health, but also we have to be concerned about earth care. Earth care is how we help earth take her power back. And getting us to be aware and informed of what's going on with soil, why soil regeneration is important, and how to help slow down the rate that soil is being desecrated in our areas and around the planet. America, let's put our hands together and unite the world. America, Native America, let's make this happen. Well, we're bringing the message to, to the LA area, okay? We're showing up and we're gonna walk five kilometers here in Elysian Park. We in LA have an opportunity that's awesome. I was born here, my father was born here. We grew up here, we saw all the changes and now we have an opportunity as a people to step forward as a generation. All of us ask our legislators and our people that represent us to make the policies that will keep soil safe from the degradation, from the desertification, from all of the ways our soil is becoming extinct. What an opportunity. We can't miss it in LA, right? 
we can't. No way. So I'm here. If we don't have the soil, then there is no life. So just to be alive and on this planet, we need to do something and, you know, help to regenerate the soil, which we are losing right now. Be conscious. That's what his motto is. You know, whatever you do in life, be conscious. It is not a glamorous subject. It is just underneath our feet, but it is what's providing life on this planet. Because of the 2008 recession, the city made cuts in the Rec and Parks Department. In the decade that followed, Council Member Paul Krikorian made it his priority to restore childcare facilities and reinvest in parks that people could be proud of. Channel 35 got a glimpse of the current state of the Victory Valley Child Care Center and its progress. Let's take a look. When I was first elected to the City Council 12 years ago, the city was still in the throes of the Great Recession. And uh, we were forced to make tremendous cuts in departments across the city. And probably the most painful cuts were in recreation and parks. In the decade that followed that, one of my biggest priorities has been to restore our child care facilities and also to reinvest in our parks to make them uh, the kinds of assets for our neighborhoods uh, that people need and that people could be proud of. And very important, we set aside another $20 million to be able to reopen child care facilities just like this one, uh, which had been closed for more than a decade. And very soon, this is going to be open again, the first restored child care facility in the city of Los Angeles. And I'm very pleased to be able to be here with Brenda Shaw, our child care director uh, for the center. And uh, Brenda, if you could tell us, what's the anticipated opening now for the center? What's going to happen next? Well, we're hoping to um, start as a summer camp and only do a half day for children from two to um, all the way to they enter kindergarten. And we're looking forward to in the fall to be completely open from 7 to 6 p.m. and offer full childcare for again for kids who are two years old till they're ready to enter kindergarten. And we're hoping to offer the parents really low cost, maybe free as well. Hopefully in the fall we'll be at full capacity and we'll be able to offer the all the whole program here. We think so often about the service that's provided to the child who's here yeah. at the Child Care mm -hmm. Center, but that service benefits the entire family. The entire family, yes, absolutely. So a parent who is looking forward to maybe going back to work, um, but doesn't have a child care option, may not be able to return to work. It may impact their ability to fend for their to family and to put food on the table. In our feature story this week, we sit down with Council Member Herb Wesson to hear about all the projects currently underway for Council District 10. The residents of this district will see huge improvements that will allow them to benefit from state-of-the-art sports and art facilities. In the words of Herb Wesson, he will deliver the services that the community wants, needs, and expects. Let's hear the story. Council District 10 and its staff is focusing on the residents of Council District 10. You put the people first. The residents of this district have gone, you know, five, six months without having a voting member of this council. Now they have a voting member, so we're here, we're back. Well, I'm very proud of several projects that are coming to light that were started when I was sitting in this chair the first time. And one of those projects is the 50 plus million dollars that is being spent at Rancho Sienica to give it the state of the art recreational facility. And that is the Michelle and Barack Obama sports complex. We have some phenomenal artists that run facilities in the city of LA. Debbie Allen is an icon. 
And for her to open this facility, it is over 24,000 square feet, double decker, about six different studios. They have the ability to seat over 200 people for a performance. My hope is by the end of this year, we're gonna be opening the Vision Theater. This will be like Broadway on Crenshaw. It has taken three councilmen, and it looks like, because of faith, I'm gonna be the councilman that's going to uh, cut the ribbon and, and open it. But if it wasn't for the three of us, it would not be here. So this should be the type of facility that the uh, community is gonna be able to take advantage of, you know, six, seven days a week. So we're very excited of, of, about that. We're very excited about the city of LA, but more excited about the 10th district. So I just, I know we've gone through somewhat of a shock, but hold on, we've got good things coming. And this uh, uh, Council District 10 is committed to delivering the services that you want, need, and expect. Experience Indian culture at the Echo Park Lotus Festival. Learn about sea life and conservation at the Pico Union Library or dance away at another free summer of salsa concert. All this up next on Things to Do. Get ready, Angelinos. The famous dragon boat races are back. Echo Park Lake will hold the 41st Lotus Festival hosting the people and culture of India and celebrating 75 years of their independence. If you want to experience the marvels of Indian culture, don't miss this free two-day festival which will provide entertainment for everyone, including a Lights of Dreams Lantern launch and yes, dragon boat races. The Lotus Festival will also boast handcrafted artwork and include a children's area, food court, host country pavilion and gift bazaar. Families, adults, and kids can attend this free festival located at the Echo Park Lake on 751 Echo Park Avenue with free parking and shuttles available. The 41st Lotus Festival will take place on Saturday, July 9th and Sunday, July 10th from 12 to 9 p.m. For more information, visit laparks.org slash Lotus Festival. Calling all ocean lovers, the Pico Union Branch Library is hosting the Blue Submarine Traveling Aquarium Museum and Marine Biologist, a must-see free event for those wishing to learn more about sea life and ocean conservation. With the help of Elisa, a marine expert, attendees will have the chance to explore the lifestyles of the slimy and squishy. Kids will handle sea stars and urchins amongst other sea creatures thanks to this traveling aquarium. The Blue Submarine is taking place on Friday, July 8th at 3.45 p.m. at the Pico Union Branch Library. For more details, check out lapl.org slash events. Summer is here and it's time to take the family to the city's historic El Pueblo, where La Plaza de Cultura y Artes is continuing its 2022 Summer of Salsa series. The Echo Park Project with DJ Robin Ho will have you dancing under the stars with their legendary salsa style of New York City, a combination of original material and hot 70s cover tunes. There will also be food and beverages available for purchase. Everyone is welcome to attend this free concert that will take place on Friday, July 8th, with doors opening at 6 p.m. and the concert starting at 7 p.m. at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, located at 501 North Main Street in downtown LA. For more information, visit lapca.org. And that's a look at some things to do. And that's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Belvau, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org, and we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.